Welcome to the Project Management Prepcast, the key to PMP exam success. Here's your instructor, Cornelius Fichtner. Hello and welcome to the Project Management Prepcast, where you suddenly start to understand how the concepts of the PIMBOK guide fit together. I'm your instructor, Cornelius Fichtner. In this lesson, we cover the control procurement process. In this iterative process, you want to make sure that your contractual rights are protected and that you yourself also meet your contractual obligations. So, in this lesson, we will focus on the contractual rights, the importance of the buyers following through on their obligations, the use of contracts and procurement documents, inspecting versus controlling tools and techniques. We'll look at performance reviews, change requests, and how disputes can be managed and controlled. And in part one of this lesson, we are going to provide you with an overview of the control procurement process, as well as a discussion of the inputs. And of course, in part two, we'll discuss the tools and techniques, the outputs, and we will have our usual review at the end. But before we can get to the review, let's do the overview. Project procurement management includes the processes that are necessary to purchase or acquire products, services, or results that are needed from outside of the project team. So procurement is all about buying things from the outside. Let's take a look at the four processes. The first one is plan procurement management. This is the process of documenting project procurement decisions, specifying the approach, and identifying potential sellers. Our second process is conduct procurements. This is the process of obtaining seller responses, selecting a seller, and then also awarding a contract. From here, we move on to control procurements, the process of managing procurement relationships, monitoring contract performance, and making changes and corrections as appropriate. And lastly, control procurements. This is the process of completing each project procurement. And when it comes to the process groups into which our four processes fall, then we see that they are nicely distributed. Plan procurements management is a planning process. Conduct procurements is an executing process. Control procurements, the focus of this lesson, is of course a, you got it, monitoring and controlling process. And lastly, close procurements. It's so obvious. It's a closing process. The main concept that you have to understand in the control procurements process is that this is the process where a lot happens in regards to procurement management. This is kind of like project integration management, where a lot happens in regards to the project. So in this process, you will manage relationships, you will document performance, you will manage changes, and of course, you will do this for your side of the procurement contract. The idea is that you want to make sure that both the seller as well as the buyer perform according to the agreed contract. This means that both you, the buyer, and your contract partner, the seller, are performing their own processes of control procurements. The seller from his point of view and you, the buyer, from your point of view. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we as the buyer only do this process to ensure that our seller delivers on their part. Oh no, any buyer will also want to ensure that they follow through on their own obligations. After all, if you have a contract, you want to make sure that you comply with the agreement that you have made in the contract. Just imagine a project where the buyer isn't holding up his or her side of the bargain. The payments are late, they don't supply the resources, agreed upon or they are not ready with their part when the seller shows up to integrate the delivery into the overall project. What kind of signal do you think this will send to the seller and the kind of quality that you can expect? So control procurements ensures that everyone, including yourself, adheres to the agreements that were made. 
Furthermore, having a contract means that there are legal obligations between two or more parties. Any actions or non-actions taken may have some legal considerations. Late payments, late delivery or delivering a product that doesn't follow specifications are just a small number of examples. Larger companies will therefore have specific control procurement policies, procedures and processes or even a separate department that deals with controlling all of its procurements. In the latter case, this department would probably assign a contract administrator to your project, but she would continue to report back to her supervisor in the contract administration department and not to you, the project manager. Consider her to be an expert that is supporting your project. Another aspect of control procurements is the management of interfaces. Imagine a large contract where one seller delivers 200 gondolas for a cable car system going up a mountain. A second seller will deliver the cable and a third will install it all. There are many purely administrative interfaces between the buyer and these three sellers, on top of all the technical ones. Or imagine another situation where you are the seller to the buyer, but you yourself again, you have a subcontract for part of your work. All these are very complex relationships and in control procurements we will manage them. Depending on the nature of the contract, administering it means that the contract administrator may have to get involved with many processes on the project. The first thing that comes to mind is, of course, verifying that the seller delivers the appropriate quality, so we are performing quality control. We will also have to keep an eye on the technical performance, which touches scope management. We need to ensure that the seller adheres to the agreed upon schedule and delivers on time. And we must make sure that the cost stays within budget. And this is of course part of performance reporting. And every contract has risks involved and they need to be mitigated, which would be part of risk monitoring and control. So you see that control procurements is more than just a simple administrative task. It is an important part of handling your relationship with your partners on the project to ensure success. Another aspect of control procurements is record keeping, in particular those records that talk about performance. The buyer will measure and document the seller's performance and vice versa. This will help both companies to issue change requests to adjust current performance as well as keep historical files to manage possible future relationships and future projects. From the seller's point of view, a change to a contract is often a good thing because the buyer usually adds additional items to the contract. This is the moment that many sellers use to get well. And by get well, we mean the following. As the seller, you may often have less room for negotiations before the contract is signed. This can be because you really want the contract or because your senior management wants to enter into an agreement with the buyer for strategic reasons. So you as the seller will therefore agree to contractual terms that may not benefit you 100% of the time. And now as the buyer wants to make changes to the contract and add additional scope, that gives you the chance to get well, to change the conditions of the contract to be more favorable for you. But of course, getting well is only one aspect. There may be changes to the contract that are beneficial for both parties, and there can be such that are negative for both of them. In any case, changes to the contract must always be implemented based on the terms that are laid out in the contract itself. This often means that changes have to be in writing and must be signed by both parties. And the same thing is of course true when it comes to the termination of the contract. You can only terminate a contract by following the appropriate termination clause in the contract itself. 
By the way, have you noticed that I have just made an intentional conceptual error here? The statement is, of course, correct. You can only terminate a contract by following the appropriate termination clause in the contract itself. But this here is the wrong process to talk about termination. This is about controlling procurements, not about closing procurements. I'm really just testing if you're still following along or if you have fallen asleep here. But to get back to our statement on closing, we will discuss that when we get to the close procurements process lesson. Let's take a look at figure 12-6 from the PIMBOK guide, the ITTOs for this process, to sort of get a sense of what we're getting into now in our lesson here. And one thing that's immediately obvious is the sheer number of inputs, tools, techniques, and outputs that this process uses. This may seem overwhelming at first, but not if you keep in mind that these are all intended to help you control your procurement's processes. You will need things like agreements or the approved change requests, right? View all these ITTOs not as something to memorize, rather view them as helpful ways to keep your procurement process in control. So let's begin with the inputs. We have six of them, the project management plan, the procurement documents, agreements, approved change requests, work performance reports, and work performance data. Out of these six inputs, that are two that we will not look at in detail. The project management plan we won't look at because we need it simply to access the procurement management plan, which will describe the process of how we administer our procurements. So the procurement management plan, which is part of the project management plan, defines what exactly it is that we do in this process here, step by step. We also won't look at the agreements because, well, we need it so that we can control the agreements. It's as simple as that. But the others deserve a closer look. So we begin with the procurement documents. And here we're not only talking about the documents that are part of the contract, like, well, the contract itself, any amendments or addendums that go along with the contract, but we refer to more. There is, for instance, also technical documentation, user manuals, invoices, payment records, inspection records, and pretty much any other documentation that we included as part of the procurement documents when we originally created them in the plan procurement management process and then updated them in the conduct procurements process. And then with our next three inputs, we have to also consider time because control procurements is not a process that starts by gathering all these inputs today and then leaving it alone until the contract ends. Far from it. Control procurements is a continuous process. There will be several iterations that you go through. As the project progresses, you will obtain new work performance reports every time you go through this process. You will also receive new approved change requests every time that you have a new iteration of control procurements. And the next time that you do control procurements, you will also have new work performance data. And this new information continuously feeds into the control procurements process. For example, this week there is a negative performance report which will lead to a change request. And then next week this action, this change request has resulted in improvements and you will have a positive performance report and this may lead to an update in the organizational process assets because your recommended corrective action worked. So you want to document that that it worked. So do consider time, do consider the repetitiveness of this process when you think about the inputs that we need. I believe we have done this before, but let's do it again because it is so much fun. Question, what is the difference between work performance data and work performance reports? 
reports. Well, the work performance data, those are the raw observations and measurements that are identified during our activities, like the extent to which quality standards are being satisfied, the costs that have been incurred or committed on our contracts, or the identification of seller invoices that have been paid. The work performance reports, on the other hand, those are the physical or electronic representations of work performance information that is compiled in project documents intended to generate decisions, actions, or awareness. And this includes seller performance-related documentation, technical documentation, and also work performance information, which are the seller's performance reports indicating which deliverables have been completed and which have not. Our final input are the approved change requests, and these can touch pretty much anything in your relationship with the seller. It could be a change to the contract, it could be a change to technical specification, a change to the schedule, a change to the cost, a change to any aspect of the procurement, really. And we need the approved change requests as inputs to our process here so that we know about them and that we may control the correct implementation and execution now that it has been changed. It would be detrimental if we had a schedule change on our contract and nobody knew about it. And with that, we have come to the end of part one here in Control Procurements. See you in part two. Toodaloo. Until next time.